Where is Ace Austin and Madman Fulton? We haven't seen them in a while. I have my theory. Deanna Perrazzo says she wants Britt Baker at Hard to Kill. Websites seem to be confused about Tony Schiavone and his storyline insults on Impact Wrestling. And the Sportster.com does its best to try to be an Impact Wrestling buzzkiller. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. Ace Austin and Madman Fulton, we haven't seen them on Impact TV for a while now. People have been asking where they are, what's going on. an article this week. Uh, actually, there have been a few online articles this week about it. Uh, but I'm going to um, read the, what Ringside News has to say because they're all pretty, they're all basically uh, the same thing. They're all reporting the same thing. So, according to Ringside News, Ace Austin has been absent from TV for a while, but he's been around. He will also be back, but they need to figure out what to do with him first. It says the Wrestling Observer Newsletter noted that former X Division champion Ace Austin was backstage at the company's last set of television tapings. He simply wasn't used. It was reported that there's no real story to the reason he's been off television. They simply don't have a feud for Ace Austin at this time. So instead of having him wrestle on television and lose, they just held him back. You know, he's sitting out. There's no indication that there's any heat on him at all. He will be back in the mix soon. He just got a little break from action for now. Okay, first off, where do these websites get their news from? Where, where, who are their sources? Because I, I, don't, I don't believe this for one second. I don't believe this for one second. Why would Impact Wrestling leave off Ace Austin, who is one of their top stars, because they simply don't have a feud for him and they don't want to put him on TV to wrestle and lose. Why would he go on TV and wrestle and lose? Why don't they just put him on TV? He doesn't have to have a feud. Just put him on TV and have him wrestle and win. What? Why would they have him wrestle? Why are they just assuming that because there's no feud for him that he would go on TV and wrestle and lose? Makes absolutely no sense. And I don't know where these websites get their sources from. Again, Ringside News, probably their, their, their source is another website. So it's just websites feeding off each other. I, I don't believe this for a second. Here's my theory. Here's my theory. My theory is this. Okay, if, if, if you remember, uh, there was reports, and which made sense, a report indicating that Impact Wrestling had filmed many different scenarios in the last set of tapings that would coincide with talent possibly leaving. Okay, and which made a lot of sense because a lot of contracts are coming up. Uh, more no, most notably, uh, Ethan Page, Ty Valkyrie, uh, Sammy Callahan. Contracts were coming up uh, that they re- need to renew. And again, Impact Wrestling filmed various scenarios to coincide with people staying or, or people leaving Impact Wrestling. My theory with Ace Austin and Madman Fulton is they were in a feud with talent that was expected to stay with Impact Wrestling, but is unfortunately not going to be staying with Impact Wrestling. So they filmed the feud with, say hypothetically, okay? Again, I have no I have no um, inside information on this. This is just hypothetical. Say it was the North, okay? Say, say uh, Madman Fulton and Ace Austin, last set of tapings, um, a feud was, um, was recorded between them and the North. And then Ethan Page indicated that he's not staying. Again, it's all hypothetical. Ethan Page uh, indicated that he's not staying with Impact Wrestling. So Impact Wrestling decided we can't go with this uh, this feud with the North and Ace Austin and Man Man Fulton. We're going to have to cut that out. So we, we won't be able to show it because it's going to be no payoff because we wanted a payoff at Hard to Kill. But unfortunately, there's going to be no payoff. Uh, for this feud, so we're not gonna we're gonna scrap that. We're not gonna show it. But instead, thankfully, we taped also a potential breakup between Josh Alexander and Ethan Page. So we'll go with that. Okay. So that's that's my theory. That's my theory. There. The reason we don't say Ace Austin and Man Man Fulton is because they were in a feud with talent that is unfortunately not coming back, and it makes no sense. For Impact Wrestling to show Ace Austin and Madman Fulton in a feud with no payoff. 
no payoff that we wanted at Hard to Kill. So that's my theory. That's my theory. There's, there's no, no. oh, we're not going to use them because we don't have a feud for them. Of course they have a feud. It's, it's one of the, the, the top guys. Ace Austin is one of their top guys. You know, if anything, they could put him back in the X Division, have him feud with, with TJP. They could have him feud with Chris Bay. They could, they could do a lot of things with, with Ace Austin. There's no way that they simply said, well... We got nothing to do with 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 Ace Austin and Man Man Fulton, so I don't, I don't believe that for a second. I I I gave my theory, and again, it's just a theory. No back, it, I have no inside information. That's my theory, and if you have a theory as well, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments. But that's my um, that's my opinion on why we don't see Ace Austin and Man Man Fulton in Impact Wrestling at this time. Now let's get on to Diana Perazzo. Diana Perazzo has indicated. That at Hard to Kill, she would like to face Britt Baker. Now, Britt Baker and Deanna Prazo have a long history with each other. And uh, Deanna Prazo would love to use the AEW Impact Wrestling's new partnership to bring them together in a match. Again, I'm on Ringside News. Uh, Deanna Prazo uh, interview recently had indicated... Um, actually, here's a quote from Deanna Prazo. Okay, Deanna Prazo says... I want to face the role model, the face of their women's division, talking about AEW, Dr. Britt Baker. She is one of my best friends. I would love to wrestle Britt at Hard to Kill. So uh, that would be a tremendous match. If they could pull that off, if Impact Wrestling and AEW, uh, now that they've forged this new partnership, if they could pull that off and have uh, Dr. Britt Baker show up and challenge Deanna Perrazzo for the uh, Knockouts Championship, that would be fantastic. But Deanna Prasso also indicates uh, that uh, she has had some interactions with Tyre Valkyrie uh, because she's the longest reigning Knockouts Champion of all time. And I'm over it, so I would like to defeat her, break her arm, maybe pile drive her and shut her up a little bit. Uh, so uh, definitely Taya. So she's uh, she's uh, indicating that eh, it's a possibility you might see me and Taya at Hard to Kill as well. Uh, I know Taya Valkyrie's contract is coming up. I don't know exactly what day, uh, but it's um, it's possible. Uh, I would say if we're gonna if we're gonna see a match for Deanna Prazo at Hard to Kill, my guess it would be Taya Valkyrie. But if they could work something out and get Doctor Brick Baker. Uh, AEW's Brick Baker um, at Hard to Kill to challenge Deanna Prazo for the Knockouts title. I think that would be fantastic. I think it would be a fantastic match. As I said, they have a long history together. Uh, they've wrestled many, many times. And um, if AEW and Impact Wrestling can work it out, hey, no complaints here for me. That's for sure. No complaints here for me. So let's see if they can, if they can work out another. Uh, AEW Impact Wrestling match uh, to take place at Hard to Kill. Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone has been insulting Impact Wrestling. Uh, if you've seen the two um, quote-unquote paid-for advertisements um, with Tony Khan and uh, AEW paid-for advertisements during Impact Wrestling with Tony Khan and Tony uh, Schiavone, uh, Tony Schiavone has been really ripping impact wrestling and uh he's actually comes across as a as a whiny troll and uh we all know that whiny trolls deserve nothing but fish stick sandwiches and they really really annoy us uh, true blue impact wrestling fans so that's what tony shivani is going for in my opinion uh, to be a whiny troll to get under the skin of impact wrestling fans i'm sure they were thinking how do we get under the skin of impact wrestling fans if we show up on impact wrestling tv Let's act like a, a whiny, let me act like a whiny troll, you know, because uh, if you go on, if you go on social media, you got trolls all the time getting ripped apart by uh, Impact Wrestling de um, devoted fans, and I'm sure Tony Schiavone has tuned into that, and he's decided that, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go for the whiny troll, the whiny troll gimmick, and, and, um, try to piss off fans, but, but it's all part of a storyline, it's all part of a storyline. Not not every single website thinks that way though. Uh, comicbook.com is a little confused. A little confused that this is just a storyline uh, because they they talk about it. Uh, first of all, their the headline of their article is AEW's Tony Schiavone can't stop burying Impact Wrestling. So to make it seem like oh Tony Schiavone's got a legitimate beef with Impact Wrestling, he can't stop burying them. And they talk about the two clips, uh, and they um, they put up the video of the two clips, and then they they even they they and and they even 
go as far <laughs> as to ask towards the end of this article, and it's very, very laughable. They, they, they're, they're questioning, is Shivani's beef with Impact legit? Is it legit? Or is it all part of the storyline between the two companies? Only time will tell. Ooh, deep. That's deep. Only time will tell. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's not legit. You know, no, this to- well, if does, does Shivani have an issue with Impact Wrestling? That's not only Tony Shivani would know. Impact Wrestling on these, on these clips, on these two clips that have, that have aired during um, Impact Wrestling Television, it's part of the storyline. Come on, come on, comicbook.com. Stop being silly. Who wrote this article? Who wrote this article? What's the guy's name that wrote this article? Con- Con- Connor Casey. Come on, Connor Casey. Let's be realistic here. And a you know, great way to to try, <laughs> great way to, to to lure people into your article by making it seem like Tony Schiavone is AEW. Is Tony Schiavone can't stop burying Impact Wrestling. It's it's part of a storyline. And for him to ask, is it legit? Is he legit burying them? It's, that's laughable. So, no, he, again, he's not legit burying them. It's all part of the storyline. You, you use your head, Connor. Use your head, Connor, on that one. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's let's move on. Let's move on from from Tony Schiavone. Let, but let's stick with AEW. Let's stick with AEW because I was watching AEW Dark. I saw the last two episodes of AEW Dark, and I normally don't sit through the whole thing because like two hours long on YouTube. But I said the last two times I said I'm going to sit through it and I'm going to watch the 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 episodes from start to finish of AEW Dark. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If if anyone could be a role model for, for Impact Wrestling right now, it's AEW Dark. I should say, if, if anything could be a role model for Impact Wrestling right now, it's, it's AEW Dark because they are doing it right in terms of introducing new talent. They are doing it right in terms of talent scouting. And they're doing it right in terms of showcasing the new talent on TV. So their wrestling, unfortunately, is doing it wrong. Impact Wrestling could definitely learn a lesson. Definitely learn a lesson from AEW Dark. I mean, let's think about it. The last time they, they they hyped up three young stars that would be coming to Impact Wrestling was a few months back where they indicated that Trey Lamar, Lee Moriarty, and Benjamin Carter are all coming to Impact Wrestling. And they, they, they didn't really make that big of a deal about it. It was on uh, their Twitter page, or it might have even been on Alex Shelley's Twitter page. I don't even think it was Impact Wrestling's Twitter page. I think Alex Shelley had to make the announcement on his on his Twitter page that uh, that these three uh, young talents are coming to Impact Wrestling, but explosion. You know, so so far we've seen Benjamin Carter, and he's has since signed with the WWE, so no chance of him coming to Impact Wrestling. Lee Moriarty has appeared. Uh, but Trey Lamar has not. We haven't seen Trey Lamar yet. So a few months back, and we've only seen two of these uh, young stars, uh, two of the three young stars, one of which we cannot touch anymore because he's signed with um, WWE. Uh, Lee Moriarty is still available. I would I would grab him immediately, grab him immediately. Uh, but um, but back to what I was uh, getting to. AEW is doing it right with AEW Dark. Impact Wrestling is not doing it right. Impact Wrestling should be watching AEW Dark. They should be learning from AEW Dark, and they should be forming, formulating a show or programming which is on YouTube, which is, which is a reformatting of Explosion, uh, which is on their Twitch page, which is on, could be on Impact Plus. But they need to do something where new talent is being introduced. The way AEW Dark is introducing new talent and showcasing new talent. I mean, let's let's think about it. Impact Wrestling, uh, if they want to bring in new talents and they want to stick them on Explosion, uh, where hardly anybody gets to see it, uh, why would why would new talent want to come over to Impact Wrestling to be on Explosion when they could get much better explo- exposure on AEW Dark? And uh, let's take let's take Danny Limelight for example. Let's take Danny Limelight. We haven't seen Danny Limelight on AEW Dark. Uh, he's been there for a while. Uh, he's been there week after week on AEW. I, I don't want to say week after week because I've seen him a few times on AEW Dark, and um, and he's uh, he's being showcased. He's being showcased, and he's having great matches. He had actually a great match against uh, Matt Seidel on the last episode of AEW Dark, and um, he's he's doing well for himself over there. If Impact Wrestling wanted to bring him over and stick him on Explosion, say against um, Cousin Jake or something, why would Danny Limelight want to do that? 
Why would he say, you know what, it's okay, I'm, uh, I got a good thing going here with AEW Dark, I'm going to stick with AEW right now, and um, hopefully I'll get a contract. Why would, why would Danny Limelight want to come over? Like, we got the Super X Cup coming up, and the Super X Cup, I discussed it on my last podcast, this is a great time for Impact Wrestling to go out and look for talented young wrestlers that have fallen under the radar. Now, this is what Court Bauer does in the MLW. He goes out, they look for talent that, that has fallen under the radar, and they bring them in, and... Um, what has that done? It's it's given them Junior for two. It's given them uh, Myron Reed. It's given them the Von Erichs. That's what Impact Wrestling needs to do. And it's it's December twentieth. Uh, Genesis is is, is um, coming up right around the corner. I believe it's January 9th. So we're like what nineteen days away from Genesis, and they haven't they they've just announced the Super X Cup. And they haven't announced any talent yet, so we don't know who we could expect at the Super X Cup, which is okay. I mean, they just announced it. Uh, but when you think of, like, the Super J Cup, that was announced months in advance. Like, we knew Chris Bay uh, was going to be at the at the Super J Cup, like, two, three months, I believe, before the Super J Cup actually happened. And this is what the Impact Wrestling should have done. They should have went out, you know, found some young talent, and they should have been plugging this for... Uh, at least a month now, and uh, at least start introducing some talent. But but nonetheless, they haven't done that, which is which is okay. Super X Cup coming back, but they they need to go and find some talent that has fallen fallen under the radar, and they need to um, get them into that Super Super X Cup, and they need to. This this is a perfect way for them to introduce new talent to the Impact Wrestling fans. Um, but again, bottom line, AEW Dark is doing it right. And right now, unfortunately, in terms of new talent, Impact Wrestling is doing it wrong. Okay, so lots of buzz going on right now uh, for Impact Wrestling with uh, Kenny Omega and the AEW um, the EW partnership with Impact Wrestling, uh, but the Sportster. This seems to be this seems to be getting the Sportster dot com a little upset, and they're doing their best, in my opinion, to be the Impact Wrestling buzz killer because they've released uh, three articles uh, recently uh, within the last uh, day or two, and they've been negative articles. They've been negative articles. I, I mentioned one on my last show. Um, I think it was the the, the top ten. Uh, TNA um, main events that didn't leave, live up to the hype. Uh, another one they released um, five dumb name changes in the WWE, and, but that's not enough. They also have to sh- sh- tell you about five dumb name changes in TNA, and uh, they also released um, ten matches TNA booked way too often. So more negative articles from from uh, the Sportster, and you know I I went and I checked and I see if. If they release any positive articles and to their credit they do release some positive articles on impact wrestling uh, but the first thing is they're still calling it tna so that's the first negative it's it's kind of like they're they're um, playing their well it's always tna to me uh attitude when it's when it's impact wrestling so that's the first insult right there uh they continue to call it tna even though like i said it's impact wrestling right now everybody knows it's impact wrestling but the sportster.com they're um, they're uh, living in their own little world, so they decided that uh, we're gonna keep the TNA name. You know, we're gonna keep the TNA TNA name. And and Kenny Omega, huge match coming up. Thank you to the big buzz and Sportster.com doing what they can to to be the buzz killers. So let like let's go like the five dumb name changes from the TNA. I'm sorry, five dumb name changes in WWE and five dumb ones from TNA. You know what number one was? You know what the number one worst name change in their opinion is? It's Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows changing his name to DOC, the Director of Chaos, when he was in Aces Aces and Eights. So that's the number one. According to Sportster, that's the number one dumbest name change, um, I guess, of all time in TNA. Luke Gallows changing his name to DOC. And coincidentally, Luke Gallows is in that huge main event with Kenny Omega. 
and Carl Anderson at Hard to Kill. So it's just a little coincidental that uh, you know that they've decided that Luke Gallows has had the worst name change in Impact Wrestling history, and we're gonna try to uh, we're trying to we're gonna try to bring that main event at Hard to Kill down a notch by by indicating that uh, he has the worst name change in Impact Wrestling history. Luke Gallows to the DLC. This this I don't see anything wrong with that there's nothing so bad about it. his name was luke gallows and he changed they changed his name to uh, the director of chaos aces, aces and eights was a a uh, faction and they needed a director of chaos and luke gallows fit the bill and luke gallows became the director of chaos became doc not that bad at least he didn't become AOC. He became DOC. Uh, if he became AOC, that that may be an issue. But uh, no, let's not, let's not get into politics. Let's not get into politics. But um, but uh, DOC was uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, nothing um, nothing wrong with uh, with uh, Luke Gallows calling himself DOC. And and you look you look at number two. They they, they say number two. Road Warriors changing their names to Legion of Doom. But nothing wrong with that. It's a stupid article. A really, really dumb article, and they said um, another embarrass. Well, you know what was embarrassing uh, when um, they, they said the New Age Outlaws changed their name to the Voodoo Kid Mafia. Okay, I, I can agree with that. That should have been number one, actually, in my opinion. The New Age Outlaws, you know, VKM, yes, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. They're using his initials, but to call themselves the Voodoo Kid Mafia, that was kind of dumb. That was. But Luke Gallows changing his name to DOC. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that. It's not embarrassing. It's not dumb. They're just trying to uh, take that, as I said, take that main event buzz down uh, a notch a bit um, at the sportster.com. And I love how, and I love how um, they they feel that they have to they have to uh, release an article the ten matches that uh, TNA booked way too much. Again, they're not calling it Impact Wrestling. They're calling it TNA. The, the 10 matches that Impact Wrestling, I'm going to call it Impact. 10 matches to Impact Wrestling booked way too much or too often. Who cares? Who cares? You know, they said, oh, they, they booked Matt Hardy versus Jeff Hardy way too much. You know, okay, so, and, and they said, what was another one here? Um, Bobby Roode versus Eric Young. Oh, it's booked way too much in Impact Wrestling. Uh, they booked Mickey James versus Tara way too much. And what was number one? Uh, yeah, AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels booked way too much. You know, again, trying to get that 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 buzz killer going, that Impact Wrestling buzz killer by by uh, releasing this group of of negative articles on um, on Impact Wrestling. And hey, you know, Sportsnet.com, you know, you're not you're not fooling me. <laughs> you're not fooling me. And all due respect, but I don't think you, you could try. But you're not going to take the buzz away from Impact Wrestling because uh, right now Impact Wrestling. Uh, with um, AEW and the storyline with Kenny Omega, it's it's the talk of pro wrestling, and, and it's even got um, the WWE's attention. You know, the WWE who the ratings are just dropping week after week after week. It's got that. It's got their attention, and it seems maybe the Sportster has tuned into this, and the Sportster is not gonna have it because maybe I don't know. Maybe they're all WWE fans at the Sportster. I don't know, but uh, uh, they're trying their best. But hey. Impact Wrestling fans, we uh, we stand tall. <laughs> we stand tall, and we don't put up with the crap. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening today. My name is Lewis Carlin. This has been Shooting Up North, and we're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.